Okay, in the last class uh, we discussed about heat work and we defined them. So, in the last class we discussed work, we discussed heat, we discussed first law of thermodynamics. And we know and we also discussed how to calculate work done. So, we know work done is minus P external times volume change and this is true for irreversible process that we already know. And for reversible process, W is nothing but minus P times dV. We can we can substitute uh, the value of P depending on the type of gas. For ideal gas, P is we know A naught T Y V. And if we substitute the value of P, we get W is minus N at T L N V 2 by V 1, where V 2 is the final volume. And V 1 is the initial volume. And this expression is varied for ideal gas and isothermal process this is for isothermal process. We also discussed and we also proved that W work done is a path function and internal energy U is a state function. Then we discussed about the work done for adiabatic reversible process I, and we ended up with an expression like P V to the gamma is constant where gamma is C p by C v that we know. Okay, so, today we will start with what would be the work done for irreversible adiabatic processes. Okay. So, work done for adiabatic irreversible processes. So, there can be two cases one is when there is no external pressure. So, when there is so case 1 is when there is no external pressure that is P external is 0. In that case, this is the simplest case one can think of. So, in that case we get W is minus P external delta V that is the general expression for calculating work done. So, you get 0. 
okay so work done is zero and the process is adiabatic one so q is also zero as the process is adiabatic so from parcel of thermodynamics we can write del u is zero so there is no temperature change okay because internal energy for an ideal gas depends on temperature since there is no internal energy change for this process so there is no temperature change and then in the next case we will consider that when external pressure is not zero So, you get W like this. So, we can write this is nothing but And we can write delta u equals to w for adiabatic process we know. So, we can write So, we considered uh, uh, three different cases for calculating uh, work done. First is uh, isothermal uh, reversible process, where W we can write like minus n R T L n V 2 by V 1. Then we can we considered uh, work done for adiabatic process and for uh, work done in adiabatic process, uh, we we will have two different uh, type of work types of work done like first one is isothermal process uh, first one is reversible process and for reversible process we get p v to the gamma is constant and for uh, irreversible process we get two cases when the simplest case is when the external pressure is zero in that case uh, we get uh, there is no internal energy change and there is no work done also and when external pressure is not zero in that case we get uh, this expression C v uh, T 2 minus T 1 equals to P external times R T 1 by P 1 minus R T 2 by P 2. Okay. Next what we do we will, com we will compare the work done between isothermal and adiabatic expansion. So, we will start with we will, cons we will consider that we consider ideal gas. Okay, ideal gas and we consider that V i is the initial volume P i is the initial pressure and V f is the final volume. and P iso is the final pressure f 
for isothermal expansion. and P area we consider as final pressure for adiabatic expansion. So, we started with same initial volume and same initial pressure and we reach to uh, same final volume for both isothermal and adiabatic processes. So, pressure has to be different. So, we will calculate final pressure for isothermal expansion and final pressure for adiabatic expansion. Okay. Once we get that we can easily calculate the work done for isothermal process and work done for adiabatic process and then we can compare between them. So, for isothermal process we know we already discussed in the last class for isothermal process we know P V or P 1 V 1 equals to P 2 V 2. So, he says that P i V i So, this is uh, from uh, Boyle's law we know that for isothermal process P i times V i equals to P iso times V f. For adiabatic process we know for adiabatic process P 1 V 1 to the gamma equals to P 2 V 2 to the gamma. So, we can write similarly like P i V i to the gamma ok. So, these are the expression we get ok. Now, from here we can write P i by P iso like this and from here we can write Now, we know that gamma is nothing but C p by C v and it is greater than 1 for most of the cases. Because C p is greater than C v for most of the cases that we know. In that case, we can write that V f by V i to the gamma like this. Okay. So, we get this. So, this tells us that P i by P idea is greater than P i by P i so. Okay. So, we get that P i so is greater than P i So, what do we get? We get that we, we first we started with same initial volume, volume for both the processes and we reached to the same final volume. 
Okay. Initial pressure was also same for both the processes and we, 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 we obtained that for isothermal process the final pressure is higher than that adiabatic process. So, if we draw whatever we discussed in a, in a simple PV diagram, we it, it will look like So, this is for isothermal process and this one is for adiabatic process. So, this is our initial pressure, this is P i, this is our P i so and is our P at here. See if we label them as like A, B, C, D, E. So, for isothermal process, work done is nothing but area under the curve A B C B. Similarly, for for isothermal for adiabatic process the work done is represented as area under the curve A E C B. Okay. So, since the area for isothermal process is higher than that of adiabatic process, so work done for isothermal process is greater than work done for adiabatic process. Okay, so, if we if, 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 if we carry out a process in isothermal uh, uh, manner, then we get more work done than that of adiabatic process. We can do very similar exercise by, by starting with same initial volume. Similarly, we can do semi we can prove similar fashion, if we started if we started with same initial volume same initial pressure and if we reach to same final pressure and if we say that final volume for isothermal process by if we represent the final volume of isothermal process by V iso. And if we say V area is the final volume f 
for adiabatic process we will get a curve like this. We get like this. Okay, so, so far we have uh, discussed or we have compared the work done for isothermal process and work done for adiabatic process. Now, we uh, will discuss about enthalpy. So, what is enthalpy? Enthalpy we denote by H. Okay. So, what do we mean by enthalpy? Next question is. Okay, so, in enthalpy we can define it like this, it is equal to the energy transferred as heat in a constant pressure process. This is very important involving only PV work. So, last part of this statement is very important. So, enthalpy can be defined as the energy transferred as heat in a constant pressure process involving only PV work. Okay. So, from first law of thermodynamics we know we know delta u is q plus w and we can further simplify it like this. So, if the process is carried out at constant volume means there is no change in volume for a process. Then we can write delta u is nothing but q v. The subscript v stands for constant volume process. So, constant volume means v 1 equals to v 2 there is no volume change in that process. Okay, so, we can calculate internal energy change for a process by measuring the heat change provided the process is carried out at constant volume. But we know that many of the chemical reactions are carried out at constant pressure process. Okay. So, how do we calculate the energy or heat change for that process. Okay. So, it would be convenient to have a state function very analogous to internal energy u, so that we could write an expression like this, like this equation 1. Okay. So, for constant pressure process, now let us see what what happens if the process is a constant pressure process. For constant pressure process, delta u is q p plus 
not plus this minus rather minus p times v1 to v2 dv. So, we get q p with nothing but delta u plus p delta v. Okay. So, for a constant pressure process heat change if we denote the heat change as q p we get this expression. Okay. So, uh, by definition this q p is nothing but enthalpy change for that process. So, we can write this is nothing but delta h. Okay. So, what we, what we got? What we, 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 we obtained that delta h is nothing but delta u plus p delta v. Okay. Okay. And for we can further simplify this one as delta u plus delta n g r t, where delta n g is the change in the number of moles of gaseous product minus number of moles of gaseous reactants. For example, into when two moles of nitrogen reacts with three moles of hydrogen both are in gaseous states it, when it produces two moles of ammonia gas in that case delta n g is 2 minus this is one example second example is like you can consider h2 delta n g for this reaction is minus 3, because the molar volume of liquid water is much much smaller than the molar volume of gas. Okay. So, molar volume. So, we can safely ignore this two term here. Okay. So, since molar volume of liquids are much much more smaller than the molar volume of gases. Okay. So, this is how one can calculate delta n g. Okay. Next, we move to heat capacity. How or what do we mean by heat capacity? Okay, so, heat capacity is defined as the amount of heat
we go ahead to raise or to increase the temperature of a substance. So, the amount of heat required to increase the temperature of a substance by 1 degree or 1 Kelvin. Okay. So, heat capacity it is defined as amount of heat required to raise the temperature of a substance by 1 degree. So, heat capacity we in general we term as C. So, C is nothing but d u by d t. Okay. Now, whether it is a it is an extensive property or it is an intensive property. Okay. So, heat capacity depends or, no, or the amount of heat required to raise the temperature of the substance by 1 degree, it depends on the amount of substance. So, it is an extensive property. Okay. So, heat capacity is an extensive property because the amount of heat required depends on the depends amount of heat required to raise 1 degree depends on amount of substance. Okay. So, heat capacity is an extensive property, okay. but heat capacity per mole or molar heat capacity is an intensive property, but Now, next question is whether heat capacity is a path function or is a state function. Heat capacity in general is a path function. So, heat capacity in general is a path function. because we get different heat capacity value if the process is carried out in constant volume process or in constant pressure process. Okay. So, heat capacity depends on whether the process is being carried out at constant volume or at constant pressure. In both cases we get different different heat capacity values. Okay. So, so, heat capacity in general is a path function, but heat capacity at constant pressure C p or C v they are state functions. Next question is why C p and how do you define okay, so heat capacity at constant volume. we define it by and we just have seen that this is nothing but is delta u by delta t or we can write this as q v by delta t. Okay. We have just seen this. What about heat capacity at constant pressure? So, we define it as C p nothing but okay. so, 
and we know C p is always greater than in or in most of the cases rather greater than C v in most of the cases. Okay, so, what is the relationship between C p and C v? Next we will discuss. Very simple derivation we can we can we can carry out. So, so we know U internal internal energy U is function of pressure and temperature. So we can write the U So, this is suppose this is our equation 1. So, we know E is function of pressure and temperature. So, d u we can write as as del u by del p at constant temperature times d p plus del u by del t at constant pressure times d t. Similarly, E is also a function of u internal energy is also a function of v and t. So, we can write d u in similar fashion we can write d u is del u by del v at constant temperature times d v plus del u by del t at constant volume d t and we denote this equation as equation number 2. Again V is also a function of pressure and temperature. If we change pressure and temperature V also changes right we know. So, we can write D V is like this. So, d v we can write del v by del p at constant temperature times d p plus del v by del t at constant pressure d t. So, this is our equation 3. Okay. So, if we substitute the value of d v from equation 3 to equation 2, So, substituting the value of d v of equation 3 into equation 2, we get d u We get like this. Okay, we can further simplify this equation as and we define this equation as equation four. 
Now, if we compare equation 1 and equation 4, we obtain del u by del p at constant temperature is del u by del v at constant temperature times del v by del p at constant temperature. So, this is our equation 5 suppose and we get we also get del u by del t at constant pressure like this. So, this is equation 6. So, so far we have not introduced the term H or enthalpy. Now, if we introduce the term enthalpy H here. So, we know H equals to U plus P V. Okay. So, we get U H H minus P V rather. So, we get del U by del T at constant pressure is del H by del T at constant pressure minus P del V by del T at constant pressure. So, this is our equation 7. Okay. So, from equation 6 and 7 we obtained Six and seven. What we obtain is del H by del T at constant pressure minus P del V by del T at constant pressure is del U by del V at constant temperature times del V by del T at constant pressure plus del U by del T at constant volume. Okay. So, this is nothing but your C P and this is nothing but your C V. So, we get C P minus C V is P plus del u by del v at constant temperature times del v by del t at constant pressure. So, this is this expression expression we say 8 is this expression 8 is a general expression. Okay. So, expression 8 is a general expression. is a general expression. Okay. So, we should remember expression 8 and ideal gas case is a special case. Okay. So, for ideal gas, we know del U by del V at constant temperature is 0 and del V by del T at constant pressure equals to N R by P. Okay, how we are getting this? So, V is N R T by P gives you del V by del T at constant pressure N R by. So, for ideal gas when there is no temperature change, we get there is no internal energy change. Okay. So, if we substitute this in, in, in the previous expression, we get C p minus C v is A n r that we are familiar with. Okay. 
we, we know this expression from our plus 2 level. Okay. This is for n mole okay. and C p minus C v, C p and C v per mole gives you this expression. Okay. So, C p minus C v is equals, equal to n r for ideal gas, but we should remember the equation 8 carefully because this is the general expression. Okay. It, it is yeah, an, an, an ideal gas case is a special case. Okay. That is it. 